Going into round seven of the Granka Chess Classic, three players shared the lead. Vitugov, Caruana, and Vashir Lagrav. And I'm going to show you a clash between two of those players with the white pieces. Maxime Vashir Lagrav, rated number four on the live rating list, and he was playing Fabiano Caruana. So, big battle here very evenly matched in some ways these players both great theoretical experts and it's in english and caruana plays e5 fabiano has a really broad opening repertoire and they play one of the the, the main lines of the english um here perhaps uh, mvl was expecting d5 here which is very popular, it's a kind of reverse Sicilian. But instead, Bishop b4 came. As I said, one of the main lines of the English, but perhaps not anticipated by Vachille Grave. And he seemed somewhat thrown by this, even though it's a very, very standard line. Um, I, I've always enjoyed playing this system with black because you just get very free development for your pieces. And has been, well, very popular actually, particularly after um, a, a Kasparov Karpov game from one of their world championship matches in 87. But even before then, um, Smyslov was the great exponent of this system with black. So you can see that black has this pawn on e4, a little bit separated from the rest of the pack but it is supported by rook and knight. And that's a little bit disruptive for white, of course. This knight has had to spin off up here. And that game I was talking about between Kasparov and Karpov, Seville 87, went f3. And you could say this is, this is the sharpest line. If white wants to get something from this opening, then f3 is the way to do it. You might recall uh, Caruana playing exactly in this way a couple of years ago in the candidates match. He won a fantastic game against Anand that went like this. And then he gave up this pawn on c4 and queen c2 and so on. So white to the center and bishops and well, very free play actually. In that Kasparov Karpov game, e3 was played and well things get pretty crazy after that it's a very unusual position but in in any case f3 is definitely the most challenging move but here maxime thought for over 20 minutes now he was obviously a bit phased by this opening found it rather unexpected and wanted to do something a little bit different. Perhaps he was a little bit concerned that Caruana would have uh, some nice bit of opening preparation ready for him. After all, he has just played in the candidates. This might well have been his in his preparation for that tournament. So instead of f3 or d3 as a safe move, he played queen c2. Well, it's been seen before, but it's it, it's nothing special because after d5, black manages to uh, bring his queen into the game very quickly. And well, it, this really helps black's development. The, the bishop can come out and yeah, there's no, no problem with the e pawn. So d3, yes, there's a pin here, but bishop f5. What I really like about black's position is that, do you notice, no unnecessary pawn moves. It's all about peace play. It's all about the center. It feels very natural to me. And, and in, in some ways a lot easier for black to play than white. And Vashir Lagrav has actually had this exact position, but playing on the black side. Uh, he had a game against the Dutch player Luke van Veli, which went rook b1, which finally ended in the draw. But it, anyway, here, Vachier Lagrave thought uh, for five minutes or so and came up with the bishop f4. 
And we're, we're sort of in new territory here. I think Vasily Lagarde was just trying to find something a little bit different um, and, and sensible. But it seems to me that he was caught in two minds after this opening. He wants to keep a bit of play going, but actually he doesn't do it in a in a in a very convincing way. And after this, well, he took on e4. Now, if everything is traded here, then this is well, rook takes possible, but you could just play queen takes here. And well, of course, white can take on d6, but you can see. The rook is active, these pawns are split, and black is certainly not worse in this position um, and just has no difficulties at all. So after, let me just backtrack, so h6 just played, and after knight takes, knight takes, then Vasily Lagrave started to improvise. He first played his queen here, so he's this pin is maintained, so he's going to get back his piece but he, he's trying to avoid exchanges. So that just uh, potentially a threat down here. So B6. Now, again, he didn't take the, the knight on E4, but instead played Rook D1. He could swipe a pawn off if he wants to be really greedy. Um, after the game, Caruana said that he, he wasn't really worried about this. And, and in positions like this, even though black is a pawn down, then he has excellent compensation with what you can see all black's pieces in the game, pressure on e2. And the knight, of course, would very much like to land on c4 at some stage. And this bishop really isn't a very good piece. So just decent compensation for black. Rook d1 played. And finally, queen steps out away from this pin. So the knight <clears throat> has to be recaptured. And this is a really pleasant position for black to play. Bishop takes, rook takes. Once those bishops are traded, then you can see these <coughs> knight squares here are, are a bit weak. In fact, all over the place around the, around the king as well. And a position like this, well, this may not be so bad for white because at least there's activity on the seventh. I mean, I, w I would think that white should be okay in this position just because of the, the rooks don't look too bad. But again, I think Vasily Lukav was sort of caught in two minds. Should he play solidly and maybe accept that the game might uh, become fairly even, Might there might be a draw, or should he try to keep something in the position? And he decided to play, well, very ambitiously, perhaps that's a, um, a kind spin on the move, but bishop f1 really looks too ambitious because it leaves black with this excellent bishop here. And although, yes, uh, retains the two bishops and supports that pawn, which can sometimes be a liability, in fact, this just gives ground to black. It's very dangerous. Uh, and again, very easy play. So rook e7 guards the pawn here and prepares to double. I think white's problem here is it's just extremely difficult to um, develop any kind of meaningful plan here and probably best is to try to hoover the queens off the board like this um i mean caruana said after after the game that he he said he he found it difficult to to find a a decent move for white in the, in the position and it's certainly more comfortable for black to play but still, one could hope to, to make a draw in this position. Um, 
may, you know, maybe this bishop will shuffle around to d4 at some moment, for example. And certainly trading the queens here looks like a sensible option because black's queen is very powerful. And also the white queen is a long way from defending on the king side. So rook ac1 played and this just doesn't seem to have much purpose. And now Caruana took the initiative really nicely with g5. Rook c1 was just too slow. If bishop e3, the queen is just going to come to f5. And this is a nice idea. Knight e5, followed by knight f3. This reminds me a little bit of Caruana's game against Ding Liren from the Candidates tournament that uh, arose out of a, a Catalan. A uh, very nice exchange sack. So, well, you, you can find that on the channel if you want to. Um, and a trade like this, well, this is just better for black. Uh, once the two bishops go, all black's pieces are, are very active. So after g5, bishop d2 played, but queen f5 anyway. You can see black's queen is heading towards the king side. White's queen is not really in play. And if c4, then again, this idea knight e5 and knight f3, black's pieces are wonderful here. It's a very difficult position for white to play. So after queen f5, f3 played. But now there are serious weaknesses in white's position. Check. Some nice variations here. If the king steps up, then black can take here. If king takes queen g1 that means that the king can't retreat back behind the pawns and well mate follows shortly there's knight and rook <clears throat> can potentially attack here so it's it'll be mate and after this if pawn takes then rookie two check next one comes down and then the queen and mate next move. And this is a very important theme in the game. After check, king h1 played. In fact, bishop takes f3 is, is once again possible. White is so tied up in this position. It, it's, I, I don't think uh, white is gonna get out of this at all. I mean, there are so many, you can just take, take this. I mean, there are other ways to play as well. Uh, rook d8 was discussed after the game. This is, it's its just a terrible pin here, followed by rook e2, or potentially knight e5 as well. Black is winning that position. I've noticed Fabiano is not a speculator. You often see him playing attacks, but he prepares them very carefully. And you, you don't see him um, sacrificing unless there is a clear tangible benefit. It, well, that, that that's a generalization, of course. Um, but I think he saw here that, well, of course he saw this sacrifice, but he saw that Black's position is so good that he didn't need to crash through straight away. And, and he, in fact, his judgment is correct. Black does have a superb position here. And queen f2 is coming anyway. So, for example, if c4, then once again queen f2 and rook e2, and it's game over. Or, well, if white tries to shut that out with e4, then we can take here. And we're going to see something very similar. Because after this, it's all clockwork, actually. Rook e2, king h1, queen f2. And if king h3, then queen f5 is mate next move. That queen is just way out of play. This is the problem. This is the problem with white's position. So bishop d5 has just been played. So nasty threats here. Bishop e1. Uh, a sad move for white to play. Uh, just means that this pawn is defended, but obviously a miserable position. Bishop c4, excellent move. Pressure here. So the pawn advanced. Now bishop takes bishop. 
White recovers that with bishop f2, hitting the queen, and then takes. But Fabiano just snapped this pawn off. Pawn for nothing, as he said afterwards. That just means that basically most of the endings are going to be winning for black now with this extra a pawn. And white's position still is very unattractive because of the weakness to the king. This pawn on f3 is weak, and, and if this one, the pawn on f3 goes, then this one goes. c4 and knight e5, that allows the queen to return to one of these squares, and also hits f3. And now g4. Um, g4 played by Caruana, a very ambitious move. He obviously just wanted to keep the initiative. It's not necessary. Black can just play like this. So forks, queen and rook. White can get out of that with either queen c2 or queen a1. But in this endgame, black is a whole pawn up for absolutely nothing. Uh, the knight is actually terribly strong on d3, and you know we're going we're to play a5. Clear pawn up. But g4 is really ambitious. It's basically just undermining the support for the e-pawn. And after that goes, then white's king is going to be in trouble. And now the queen just came back. Very coolly played by, by Fabiano. Very confidently played. That he doesn't need to recapture this pawn as quickly as possible. He just sees that white's pawns here are just a wreck. And in combination with white's exposed king, this, well, his judgment was correct. This is just technically a lost position, actually. Okay, let's see what happened. Well, knight g4 is possible, but he was very keen to get rid of that bishop to make sure that Nothing was happening on the long diagonal. So now this really has to be traded. I mean, it can't retreat away from the long diagonal. And these pawns are too weak. Uh, yeah, if rook f6, for example, well, let's just do this. Here's a nice variation. Just shows you the kind of trouble that white is in. It's really impossible to defend these pawns. And now... Because white's king is so open, you can just trade queens and win an endgame. Really simple. In this position, queen f3 was played. Rook takes pawn. So now Caruana is up a pawn again. These two still under fire. That got taken. So now it's two pawns. And in this position, Vashilagav had had enough. Two pawns down, exposed king, black has everything under control. And yeah, its resignation is, is about right in this position. So, very interesting to see uh, how Maxime was, I think, thoroughly outplayed there. And Caruana very, very confident indeed. So that means that uh, Fabiano goes... Uh, uh, into round eight with a half point lead ahead of Carlson and Vitugov. Um, if you want to see playlists, then take a look up there. I almost did that, but it's up there. <laughs> Click on the info tab and you can see playlists of um, Caruana's games and Maxime Bachelet-Garve's games. If you want to see interviews as well, you can see 99 second interviews too with both the players. And well, tell me, do you think Caruana can do it? Two rounds to go and he's half a point ahead. Can Carlson catch him? Thanks for watching.